Jamaica richest criminal organization, the illicit aid. Eight politicians who are under severe investigation by the Integrity Commission in Jamaica. The country is anxiously waiting to hear details of an Integrity Commission investigation of parliamentarians for illicit enrichment. And $14 billion has suddenly just gone missing from the Jamaica public purse. Much of the money that the Labour had spent in this election was money that they stole. This was as a result of them stealing $14 billion from the public purse. $14 billion, that's $4.6 million from every single Jamaican, including the baby, including the beggar who has to pay GCT. But these politicians are not like your regular Jamaicans. These politicians live in extreme luxury and own assets with immense value. But how did they get so rich? The evidence is clear. Tax Administration Jamaica under fire for spending hundreds of millions of dollars on unoccupied properties. $371.8 million. Tax Administration Jamaica is a revenue authority that reports to the finance minister who is Nigel Clark. So the TAJ basically deal with tax collection. TAJ collect the tax and report it to the minister of finance. Now the government has used many strategies to exploit taxpayers money or in other case turn the TAJ into their personal piggy bank. Some of which includes giving their friends work but with a pay of three times increase than which the previous occupant of this job had. Friends of the government getting jobs at three times the pay that the previous occupants of the job had while at the same time long serving loyal patriotic civil servants while the teachers are handing in their resignation, remember 400 teachers are handing their resignation already and the government is increasing their friends' pay three times. Getting jobs at three times the pay. And worst of all, laundering money from the TAJ to rental and lease income. $371.8 million. That's how much Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ has spent on unoccupied properties. People, this is money laundering in living colors, live and direct. Money laundering. And before anybody jump on me if you defend this, remember, these buildings have been unoccupied, so rent a peer to building where nobody now use. This building has been unoccupied for three years. It's one of two properties that the Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ, has spent over $370 million to lease over a three-year period. And most importantly, them building are shut down, meaning them cannot be used, them locked down out of service. At the building in Anata Bay, a notice on the gate indicates that the branch is closed. So basically, if the building locked down and not using, no money is needed to be paid to, be, to this building, especially out of taxpayer money while the hospitals are in the condition that they are in. Beyond the gate, a note on the wall reads, kindly visit Port Maria, Buff Bay or the Port Antonio branch to conduct business. So three buildings are currently laundering money that we know of. One is owned by JLP member Norman Dunn, who this man is a puppet set by the Prime Minister to launder the money and be the scapegoat and take the fall yeah, be the scapegoat if him never know. According to Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis, the building, which is owned by Member of Parliament Norman Dunn, was leased for $700,000 per month. So if there is three property, Norman Dunn collecting the rent for, Norman Dunn own one, so who own the other two properties? One in Greenville, Manchester, and the other in Notabe, St. Mary. Venice Ricketts, Wagwan. Ends the Powell, what going on over TAJ, Integrity Commission, what going on for reports them. These politicians have proven themselves to be notorious 
taking extreme measures to acquire properties involving themselves in many farm destruction many Jamaican farmers farm being destroyed and raid this is what the, um, the tractor came in and started doing yesterday this used to be a little truck we had plants there they just swooped in so they started even cutting the banana even more interesting this is the property of the Kobe properties over there in St. Thomas and I'm getting to understand that this property Kobe property yes was originally owned by the grandparents of Melissa Silvera however Melissa Silvera's grandparents lost these properties in the 90s due to the Finsac debacle. Yes, however, the granddaughter, Melissa Silvera, was going through the process of acquiring these properties. Yes, upon submitting paperwork for receiving these properties belonging to her grandparents, that was when she met her untimely death. Now, this is where the story is a bit tricky. Because we are getting to understand that these Kobe properties now owned by Mrs. Bramwell. Mrs. Bramwell is now the new owner of those property. And when I said Mrs. Bramwell, we are talking about the wife of the Prime Minister, Mr. Andrew Bramwell. We have some interesting developments taking place in this case, you know. So what are the core functions of the RGD? Why does the RGD exist? Um, birth registrations, death registrations, marriage registrations. Right. We also do stillbirth registrations and adoption registrations. Mm -hmm. There is another component of the RGD, um, a lesser known component, which right, is the right. Island Records Office that deals with recording of wills and deeds. Deed. deed. A deed is a signed legal document that transfers ownership of an asset to a new owner. How oh, coincident is it? We have the CEO of the RGD getting arrested, the same people that we deal with the wills and the deed, while we have Julia Niam popping up and other people property. Could this be connected? The, 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 one of the the issues with the black and white certificate was that it was just a piece of paper that was written on in pen by hand by hand yes right? and um as such persons could go and you know you, you adjust and you change a a to a o you change a u to a e and 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 suddenly um hubert becomes herbert mm. you know? melissa grandparent then they lose a piece of land now melissa come and melissa they fight for the piece of land and all of a sudden when she get when she get through the land she just lose her three points just like that. Then after their journey of acquiring wealth illegally was cut short, yes, they tried to cover it up. A special report is tabled on the matter that the country is waiting to hear, the illicit six. That would come to the house and go order straight or, to no. the... On a point of order, I do not know of what you are speaking, member. It's a... Mm -hmm. I don't know, no. The please, country is please, waiting to please hear, the illicit remove six. that comment. Please remove that comment. That comment is inappropriate, doesn't belong in the house, and is not included in any document submitted in this honorable house. And then after you realize that the lie did not work, you refuse to table the report. And there was a concern about individuals being on a committee who are subject of the report. In the speaker's ruling, member with absolute respect is final in this regard both from myself and the clerk that we are in dialogue and wish to say nothing else the speaker is not always right but the ruling is always final and then after you realize that that's still not work you call your legislation just so that you can do it in a private i have taken a further decision to today table the reports all illicit behavior but i am not surprised based on the dishonesty that the government has been showing i was born in spanish town grew up at 56 summer road in a board house pandemic room five minutes later i was born 
in a two bedroom board house what? just down the road Eli from the grass yard market. My father Eli is still a farmer, and my mother is a retired civil servant. Damn. I've always said to people do not trust the words of politicians. Oh, you're born in a one bedroom. In a board house, one bedroom. And then you reach in a two bedroom. I was born in a two bedroom board house. Oh, my man. No assets declared. Minister, your statutory declarations have not been certified by the Integrity Commission. You know, the implication of this goes far and wide. Why hasn't it been certified? And does the public have anything to be concerned about? You would appear, and we don't see it very often, so. Please, let her uh, answer the question because I. Uh, um, uh, as it relates to my uh, integrity declarations, um, I do hope to be able to respond to them before the end of this week. Before the end of this week. Well, the only problem with that is this video I made four months ago telling lies again. The person was trapped and their identity discovered. Five minutes later. There is no um, tracking of people. There is no um, tracking of people. When Mr. Lai can don over Yasa, don't think I do what me I make. As we protect the rights of our people and protect the right to freedom of expression and speech, that at the same time it is grounded in truth. And I think the goal of everything that we are doing is ensuring that we are in an environment that is based on truth that is what it is about and so there is no um tracking of people the person was tracked and their identity discovered no he's telling lie about the needs and the cashless system there is no attempt by the government to remove cash meaning paper money from the system five minutes later very soon this position of a, a human being exchanging cash and so on. that is going to disappear from the banking system very soon remember to like and subscribe because this is just about to get crazy we are working with the supreme court but this process has now gotten a significant kickstart mm -hmm. again through the national Ident identification systems project the national identification system is designed to increase the level of transactions take place and you you know when an economy is booming when it is growing you can just measure transactions just the number of transactions that are taking place what we're trying to do as a government one is to un, is to create this system make it very strong and robust and integrous that it can stand up to intense usage uh, there's a whole heap of technology behind the scenes you can get in contact with the servers to verify identity, that information can be exchanged. All of that is happening in the background. The public may not be, be aware of it. How did this assist in the working environment inside the RGD? The, 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 the analytics that it generated for us also assisted us in becoming much more efficient at what we do. Just about a month ago, or thereabouts, the Prime Minister would have signed a massive um, deal to digitize on a large scale our records. Mr. Holness says the MOU will bring significant benefits to the Jamaican people, including reduced bank charges and using only one form of identification when doing transactions or opening accounts. Mr. Holness says that operating digitally reduces the cost of operations. He urged the banking sector to pass on those savings. Ensure that the promise of digitization does result in a reduced banking cost to the average citizen. I would write a juicy party in Bagwak, so if you're in a Bagwak, stop by. And also remember, don't believe not what I'm saying in this video. This video is all for entertainment purposes.